Armageddon is coming to the Holy Land. 24 hours is what the IDF has given the UN to evacuate the northern Gaza Strip. Once they go in there, Hezbollah gets activated and this whole region flares up like a Canadian forest fire. It's going to get very ugly and NATO is up to some very suspicious nuclear business today and all throughout next week in and around the Mediterranean. We got to talk about that. Guys, I don't know how much time we have left, so let's just get right to this video. This is a map brought to you by the State Department. It shows you where all the level four travel advisories are. Red means dead. If you stay in that country long enough and talk to the wrong people, you're probably not going to come back in one piece. We're talking about countries like Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Somalia, Sudan, Libya, Niger, Russia, Belarus, and of course Ukraine, who's currently in a hot war with the Russians. Now, red means that we've probably been at war with those countries in the past, are currently at war, or likely will be at war with in the future. Surprisingly, we still have some diplomacy with these countries that are in red. Either they're in disarray or maybe we're somewhat at odds with them, but we're trying to rebuild those bridges. Case in point, Iraq. We have an embassy, that's a blue star, and we have a consulate, that's a red star. This is a good sign. This is a, a hedge against going to all-out war with a country. If you have an embassy, that's a great diplomatic channel. And if the country isn't in red, then you know that war is not imminent. However, take a look at Lebanon. Right now, it's a level three travel advisory, meaning that the risk is high and you should reconsider travel. Not quite red yet, but I'm thinking that as soon as shit pops off here in the Gaza Strip, because they're going to go in in the north, that's when this is going to first turn red. There's going to be a travel advisory. You're going to start to see maybe not the evacuation of people, but you might. It might actually turn into an evacuation. Surprisingly, Israel is still in yellow, which is strange to me. And maybe this just hasn't been updated yet. When is this? This is October 2nd, 2023. Okay, so that was right before things went down. So I have a sneaking suspicion that the uh, travel advisory is higher right now, considering... I mean, many other countries are evacuating. So again, you can't take this as the gospel with respect to how things are going to heat up. This is the American government interpretation of how bad it's going to get. Many other countries have evacuated their citizens. Now, in Lebanon, it's level three. When this turns to red, there's a very good chance that Hezbollah is going to start engaging in a crossfire with the Israelis in the north. And when that embassy is evacuated, that's when all hell breaks loose. That's when you know that, you know, maybe Syria is getting involved, the Lebanese themselves, the government, and not Hezbollah is possibly getting involved. Because what likely will be the chain of events, if you can play this out in your mind, is Israel tomorrow invades northern Gaza Strip. Hezbollah does some stuff. This aircraft carrier that's out here that you can't see on the screen, the Gerald R. Ford, maybe they engage... Uh, either Hamas or Hezbollah in some way, shape, or form. When that first shot is fired, all hell could break loose. And I do believe that all hell is going to break loose around the world in one way or another, all right? Because the situation is much different than it was in 2008. There's a much higher percentage of Islamic people spread throughout the world. The Islamic diaspora is much bigger and it's causing unrest in New York, People are calling in all the police to work tomorrow because they think the shit's going to go down. It might, it might not. It might be a big nothing burger to try to instill more fear in us so they can take more of our rights away. Who the hell knows? What's likely going to happen? They're going to invade the northern Gaza Strip. The Hezbollah is going to get involved. Hezbollah, meaning pretty much all the other uh, Palestinian jihad factions, the Iranians and whoever else. And Americans are going to get involved then that's going to just cause things to flare up. The Syrians are going to potentially get involved. And then, of course, ultimately, it's going to go back to Iran, who, unfortunately, we have no leading indicator because there is no embassy. They're already at level four advisory. For all we know, war could flare up right away. So, all that said, it's a good time to be a prepper. It's been a good time to be a prepper since the assassination of Soleimani, when I made that first video 
before the world just turned a corner. And it appears as though it's like the, the elites now, they, they want reruns. You know, they've run out of ideas, so they're like, uh, what should we do today? Ah, let's just use the terrorist thing again. So it's back to the war on terror. Here we go once again. Let's take a look at the map. Some interesting developments, all right? We got lots of military activity happening in Iran. Apparently, this is in Iraq. Okay, got some Punjabi MC on there or something. Uh, apparently, these are all fighters that are heading to, I think this is in Iraq. These are all guys who are heading towards Syria, uh, possibly to fight on behalf with Hezbollah or something like that. So you have that. You also have uh, Iran, who is sending their forces. They're moving tanks and equipment towards the uh, Kurdistan part of their border that they share with Iraq in the west. And I'm just still getting myself familiar with the geography here. But essentially, Iran... I can show you on the map. Let's, I think this other map is a little clearer to see. So Iran is sending, sending these tanks in and around the, the northern part of this region here. And I presume, I'm not sure if they're going to get that in there through Syria or how exactly they're going to bring weapons in there. But if that continues, it's very likely that Israel is going to target Iran because, of course, they're going to see Iran as the root of the problem. Now, interestingly, the Shiites and the Sunnis are becoming unified. A great tweet by Pepe Escobar. He says that MBS and Razi, these are the leaders of Saudi and Iran respectively, for the first time ever had a phone call uh, and talked about unwavering defense of the oppressed Palestinian people. And in two and a half months, they will both be official members of BRICS. Remember BRICS, spearheaded by the Russians and the Chinese. The IDF notified the UN to evacuate its staff from the northern Gaza Strip in the next 24 hours as per sources to Axios. This is confirmed, by the way, so this is very likely. And the reason why they're going in the north, it makes perfect sense. I'm no military tactician, but think about it. Now, you have the Gaza Strip, who is currently without water, without food, without shelter in many cases. Uh, there's 500,000 people there who have been um, forced out of their homes because they've either been blown up or they're under risk of being blown up. I think there's about a million children there under the age of 18. So it is a terrible situation. There are no humanitarian corridors and there is no aid. The only aid that is coming into Israel right now is bombs to drop on the Gaza Strip. Uh, make of that what you will. But we're not going to discuss the politics of that today because then this video will go off the rails and uh, it'll just turn into a mess in the comment section. We're going to stick to trying to analyze this situation in terms of what is about to happen next. So they're going to go in from the north because if you go in through the south, you're very close to the Egyptian border and maybe they don't want to do that for whatever reason. I guess you don't want to go in in the center because then you'd be caught in a crossfire potentially, although you could potentially split the forces and it's not like it's a huge area it's not like this is ukraine and now hopefully people will have a greater appreciation for what the russians were trying to do in ukraine when israel it pretty much takes like four aircraft carriers and you know the mobilization of the entire west uh, for them to feel comfortable going in and doing a ground invasion of the Gaza. anyways they're going to go in the north so the un has to, and they're probably going to work their way this way, I presume. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the end game is. All I know is when that happens, it's going to piss a lot of people off. And I think this whole day of rage is probably a little overblown. Yes, there are numerous protests around the world. I can't actually show you the footage, but it is going to get violent. It seems as though the left is starting to really become a line because uh, Mrs. Cortez has taken on the role of being the advocate for Gaza. So it's funny how they're sorting people out. You know, it's almost like one of those coin sorters. 
you know, you want to find out like who the diehard rebels are, right? So you found out during the pandemic, okay, this guy is going to believe this, but he's not going to believe that. Then you got the Ukraine war. Okay, this guy's going to let us get away with this, but not that. And now it's this Israel Hamas thing. Okay, so this guy, and they're figuring us out, right? For the final smackdown, the final dystopian smackdown. More about that in another video, but yeah, the shit's gonna hit the fan. I don't necessarily think it's gonna hit the fan tomorrow at exactly 12 o'clock, but what we're likely going to see is more violent acts perpetrated in order to exact terror on the population uh, in response to what likely will be um, a, a very gruesome invasion into the Gaza Strip, where a lot of innocent people are going to die. And yes, there are a lot of innocent people there. If you knew anything about the situation, you would know what I'm talking about. But some people think they got all figured out, even though they ain't thinking that much. Listen to this. Gerald, Gerald Salente, my main man, says a week before Hamas attack, reports emerged that Ukraine urged the West to bomb drone-making facilities in Syria and Iran. Hmm, what a coincidence. What a coincidence that Israeli Air Force simulated military strikes on Iranian nuclear facilities last year. What a coincidence that uh, Israel or IDF launched major drill focusing on preparing for all-out multi-front war back in May of 2023. What a surprise that all these aircraft carriers just happen to be pre-positioned complete with Marines on them. What a surprise. Israel military to hold large-scale drills simulating wide-scale attack on Iran, May 17th. And remember, Netanyahu says he'll go it alone if he has to. Go it alone. Hmm. Is it really going it alone if you're given nuclear weapons, if you're given billions of dollars of equipment, if the United States is flying weapons to you 24-7 and they're parking aircraft carriers out? Is that really, you know, that's like one of those, uh, you know, uh, was that movie, uh, was The Bear? You ever, guys ever seen that? Back in the 80s, where there's a little, little cub and this cougar is going to attack the bear. And uh, the, the cub is like, you know, making itself look big and the cougar backs off, right? Because he thinks, so. Oh. The, so the cub thinks, this is a terrible analogy, the cub thinks it was him that scared the cougar when in fact there was this giant grizzly bear behind him that scared away the cougar. Anyways, I totally botched that, but you guys get what I mean. It's talking tough when, you know, you got some big bully to back you up, I guess. This is the position of all the U.S. military bases that currently surround Iran. There's a lot of troops and uh, the Saudis are going to have to make a decision because apparently, according to Pepe, they're on the phone. The Saudis, of course, have been starting to distance themselves from the United States. So it's going to be interesting to see how they factor in. You might have the unification of the Muslim world. There's nothing... The U.S. fears more, I think, than the unification of Sunnis and Shiites. The coming together, that could be very, very bad for the military-industrial complex, or it could be good. You never know. Oh, yeah, did I mention that Israel bombed Syria's airports today? You know, this is one of those situations. I said it yesterday. The thing with Russia and Ukraine is that there's a bit of rationality there. There's a little bit of you know, a respect for certain boundaries. But when religion gets involved and you have zealots involved, things can spiral out of control fast. So they say to prevent the transfer of militants, the IDF launches strikes at the airports of Damascus and Aleppo. And Russia is saying that that's a violation of international law. Interesting. Well, who's going to be there to enforce that law? Some people will say that's hypocritical because of what Russia has done to Ukraine. Also interesting to note, uh, non-signatories to the International Criminal Court, the Roman Statute. What two countries aren't signatories? Is it Israel and the United... I think it is Israel and the United States. That's right. Isn't that interesting? What a coincidence. All right. So... What else do we got going on around the world? Man, shit is, shit is heating up. So Iran's foreign minister, I probably should have said this first, but basically right now in Lebanon, or in Beirut, I should say, you have Iran's foreign minister meeting with Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad along with Lebanese officials. So 
you have this meeting taking place at the same time. And remember, all of these guys just recently met with the Russians within the last month. So you know this was a coordinated thing. Concurrently with that, you have uh, what's-his-face in uh, Israel, Mr. Blinken, and I think Lloyd Austin is heading there, as well as other official from NATO countries are heading there in order to discuss how they're going to prosecute this conflict, I suppose. So it's not looking good. Namely, uh, the point of uh, concern here is that the Iranian foreign minister said this, he said the continuation of Israeli attacks against the Palestinians will be met with a response from the rest of the Axis. Meaning the Axis, Axis in plural is Axis, okay? So from the rest of the Axis, uh, that will be met. Uh, you'll get a, a violent response from us, essentially saying that we're willing to go to war. Now, is Syria going to be the conduit or is Israel going to be forced to attack Iran directly it's possible remember they have nuclear weapons so they can pretty much do what they want i guess unless they know something that we don't maybe iran already has the nuclear weapons maybe for all we know russia has already extended the nuclear umbrella over iran recently a uh, representative of the russian government said i believe it was was it dugan or i know most most of the uh, spokespeople for the russian government have essentially declared Iran an ally. Obviously, they're sending military equipment to and from, so they're definitely allied with them, but uh, essentially that they would come to Iran's aid if they were attacked. So is this the sword of Damocles that hangs overhead of Israel preventing them from wanting to actually target Iran in a in a way which is really significant. I guess we're going to find out in the not so distant future, okay? Now, another thing we need to talk about, NATO is planning on doing uh, nuclear exercises, okay? So I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, but uh, we're just gonna play this. This is from Mr. Jan Stoltenberg. Let's see what he has to say. Russia's war uh, on Ukraine is a reminder of the important role NATO's nuclear weapons play in deterring aggression. Next week, NATO will hold its annual nuclear exercise, Steadfast Noon. This is a routine training event that happens every October. This year, the training will take place over Italy, Croatia and the Mediterranean Sea. All right, so notice what he said there. Notice the words he emphasized. Routine happens annually. Nothing to see here. Well, if you still think there's nothing to see here, then my friend, you might as well just put your head in the sand and take up a new hobby because there definitely is something to see here. The amount of Stratcom activity lately has been off the charts. Even the most conservative of the flight radar super sleuths are starting to have their eyebrows raised a little bit. And this is all going to coincide now with possibly two aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean, things getting hot in the Black Sea as we speak with all the nuclear tension in the air. Now they're going to run this nuclear exercise. Yes, this is something that is run every year that is not what's out of the ordinary doing anything like this in the current climate can create a lot of accidents that is the problem especially when you're moving military equipment all over the place and strategic equipment okay uh, aircraft uh, that can carry nuclear weapons and uh, with the stuff going on in the middle east now definitely in a higher state of defcon there is no doubt about it Today, the United States released their Nuclear Posture Review. So America's Strategic Posture, the final report on the Congressional Commission of the Strategic Posture of the United States, a 100,000-page document that we're going to have to bring one of our resident experts on here to break down and dissect in a compendious way that everybody can understand it. Essentially, what you need to know is that they're going to start building more nuclear weapons, they're going to start building new delivery systems, and they're probably going to start testing again. That's the gist 
of this write-up. They're saying they're justifying this because the Chinese now are getting more nuclear weapons. There's more nuclear targets, they claim. So they're probably going to double their nuclear arsenal in the coming years ahead. If we have years, the way things are going, the commission recommends fully and urgently executing the U.S. nuclear, urgently, U.S. nuclear modernization program of record, which includes replacement of all U.S. nuclear delivery systems, modernization of their warheads, comprehensive modernization of U.S. nuclear command, control, and communications, complete overhaul, going to cost billions and billions of dollars. And how much debt did we add today in the United States? They added, what was it? Was it $300 billion or some crazy amount? It was like the entire GDP of Russia or the entire debt of Russia we're adding every few days. <laughs> it's crazy. Our key informant here, who knows a lot about uh, Stratcom stuff, sent me a, another message. If you don't know who that is, I've done a few videos recently where he proposes some interesting food for thought as it pertains to nuclear weapons and how a nuclear war might play out. But he's on the up and up with this, and he's always sending me you know, information about what he perceives in terms of our current uh, state of DEFCON. And he has to say that US Strategic Missile Command is now sending and receiving text messages or test messages and disregard messages to and from E6 command planes. So these are emergency action messages. Uh, command planes to hibernate, which is presumably the call sign for the land-based silo network of US and Canada. Canada, I'm, maybe there's relay stations, radar stations, I don't know, but there's no uh, land-based missiles in Canada, as far as I know. There's no way to know what these messages mean, but the very fact that hibernate is active says a lot, he says. Especially as we get close to Friday the 13th. Hibernate is not listed as a single land base, so is presumably the call sign for the entire missile network. Friday the 13th, of course, this call to arms, this global jihad which for all we know could be a big nothing burger but it's likely going to be the launching point for more frequent attacks asymmetrical style attacks across uh, the west okay so he also claims that there's heightened vip movement from dc to offit air force base bunker offit air force base is the home of u.s strategic command okay that's where they call the nuclear shots from VIP movements, he tracks that through uh, different um, memos he gets from the Federation, uh, what is it called, the Federal Aviation Administration. My brain is totally fried, as you probably figured out. And uh, he's been getting a lot more of these memos lately from the Federa Federal Aviation uh, Administration. And you get these if you work, I'm, I'm presuming, in an airport. I think this is actually publicly accessible, so this is not like classified information, but whenever there's a VIP, a very important person on a plane, a high-ranking government official, there's a special procedure and protocol they have to follow. And there's been a lot more of these lately, apparently in and around the Offutt Air Force Base. Doomsday command and control planes in the air at the same time as VIP movement. B-52, and I don't know what it takes to constitute a VIP. Like, I don't know if you know how high up the chain of command you have to be to be considered VIP in that respect. I'm assuming it's pretty high. B-52 on patrol at the same time, sub hunter plane on patrol. There's all kind of nuke sniffers all over the world right now. Command and control, reconnaissance, surveillance. He claims they suspect something and they're looking for it and making preparations. So I guess time will tell. There's no doubt in my mind that things are popping off in the next 24 hours. I think that this invasion of the Gaza Strip, if that's what they're planning, is just going to kick a wild hornet's nest. And we're going to see violence flare up throughout the Middle East, which ultimately will lead to a war between nation states. And that is going to create chaos around the world. Because unlike 2008, when that Gaza war was being fought, you didn't have as many... Muslim immigrants in these other countries where, you know, they're, they're predominantly Western Christian countries. Now, you may well see enmity form between those two groups. Remember, those two groups were on the brink of coming together recently. And this is what everybody needs to keep in mind. And this is why I think they use the religions. They get the religions to fight with each other 
it's the easiest way to keep people divided. So they want to get the Christians fighting with the Muslims again. And this is probably going to, how they're going to do it. Because we're kind of getting unified in and around the culture war stuff. You started to see some harmon harmonization of ideas between Christians and uh, Muslims. Even Muslims who were, you know, historically voting liberal in Canada were starting to rail against Trudeau because of his policies around 55,000 different genders and whatnot. Not here to make a value judgment on that, just telling you how it is. So it seems as though there was unity developing, and now that has pretty much, they've driven a wedge right through it, and we're going to see riots in the streets. They're already making it a left-right issue with uh, Cortez taking the side of the um, the Gazans and, you know, uh, the right, all of a sudden Ben Shapiro is this war hawk, this rabid, you know, dog on Twitter. I'm really getting tired of that guy. It just, he just keeps going on and on and on. It's not that I don't sympathize and it's not just because I disagree with Ben Shapiro that I don't sympathize with the plight of the Israelis who are massacred and it's nothing like that. See, they always want to pigeonhole you and put you in a box and get you fighting. And I think it almost seems like that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to be provocative. A lot of people are doing this to be provocative. And of course, everybody who works under him at the Daily Wire are taking or echoing the same uh, perspective, even though they might not necessarily agree with it. I like Gabber Matt's take on this. I like uh, Norman Finkelstein's take on this. There's plenty of people. I think uh, even Sarah Silverman had another interesting take on this whole situation. So, you know... Just remember, guys, this is how they control us, right? And try not to get too caught up in it because it's exactly what they want. They want us to fight with each other. At the same time, don't lose your humanity. That's all I will say about it. Iran is conducting military exercises. Hezbollah, the Secretary General Nasrallah, says that the U.S. knows we can destroy the fleet in the Mediterranean with advanced missiles if we so choose. So this is what we got going on here. This is what's in a carrier strike group. We got an aircraft carrier. We got a destroyer. We got cruisers, probably several of each uh, that are going to defend that aircraft carrier. And uh, apparently Hezbollah claims they got some missiles that can take out the ships, some torpedoes, I'm guessing. And uh, I don't know if they got torpedoes or if they're just going to try to hit with missiles. I don't know what they're going to do. Maybe some mines or who knows. But uh, anyways, we could see another Gulf of Tonkin incident. And uh, it's likely that the Americans are going to enter the war and start hitting targets like Hezbollah and Hamas. And then is there going to be retaliation? And is that going to be? Is there going to be a ship sunk? Is it going to be the, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident that they need to enter the conflict? It's hard to say. France, England, numerous countries around the world are thinking of banning protests as they pertain to the Palestinian flag. Don't know if it's legal, but they're starting to crack down all around the world. Not looking good. You know, I was going to ramble on about other stuff, but I just need a break tonight, guys. I think we just need to see how this whole situation is playing out. Inflation is continuing to rise, and uh, people are starting to get stretched, but people won't actually make a move until they're starving. You know, people need to be starving before the shit hits the fan. Let's hope it doesn't come to that, but we know that military equipment is moving in and around Iran, Iraq is getting fired up. There's going to be some crazy shit. And maybe that's exactly what they want to happen. So pay attention to the U.S. State Department travel advisory map. When you see those squares turn to red, that's when you know things are about to get interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Canadian Prepper out.